Welcome back. I get a lot of questions about how do I orient my print and what support settings do I use on FDM. So I'm going to be sharing with you a few examples in um, how I do use and a few tricks that I use to get uh, minimum scarring and easy to remove supports. So the first thing you need to do is to unlock snap rotation. So that will allow you to move your uh, part very freely without any snapping points uh, and what you're going to look for uh, here I'm using Cura as usual uh, we're going to be looking for all these red marks which usually indicates the overhangs and they usually indicate what parts will uh, your supports being uh, attached to it so it obviously depends on uh, your support settings I'm going to go through that quickly uh, in a minute but uh, you always try to make it as uh, evident as possible. So try to hide that in areas of your print that will not um, be too visible. Like here, for example, you see the uh, peg and the, the connection point to the, the wrist, it's fully red. So I don't really care about the, um, the finish in that area because it's gonna be hidden anyway. So I'm gonna move on to my uh, figure uh, settings. Uh, if you want to know more details about all my settings, here's the link for another video that I made. Uh, I'm just going to quickly here go through the temperatures. I usually like to make it a bit hotter in the first couple of layers just so I can get that very nice adhesion and also add the bed's temperature a bit hotter. So going to the important bits, I'll save that for later. The important bits here are the support. So I always usually um, get three supports in Kira. Uh, because that it snaps off very easily unless I'm doing something mechanical I will go for three supports so double check uh, what is your overhang angle here you see mine's at 60 and I also get the zigzag pattern because it's very easy and it doesn't take a lot of time to to print it's easy to break as well uh, what you want to check is what is your gap between the supports and the parts itself and I usually set that up to be twice the height of my layer height so you know I always like to have very good details uh, I'll keep this setting uh, visible I always like to print at 0 0.08 uh, millimeter height and obviously because uh, like I said I like to keep it twice of the height that will be 0 0.16 as I've just shown you and that ensures you have that tiny little uh, gap between the supports and the parts itself which will help you uh, break the supports very easily without having to scrape it or anything like that the caveat on that is that if you make it too wide, uh, the print itself might sag a little bit and then the, um, uh, the finish will not be as crisp as uh, if you had it very close. So you need to kind of attune that, but usually twice the layer height is very good for this results that I have. So going back to the print, um, you will need now to be mo moving it around and trying to visualize what is the best way where you actually want to see uh, more detail and you know less scouring so here for example I'll try to make it uh, less visible underneath the, the fingers so this is a very dynamic hand sculpture uh, you see you have fingers going all over the place different directions and stuff so it's going to be really tricky to get all the fingers uh, without any supports whatsoever so you keep spinning that in multiple directions trying to find the best compromise uh, I think for the dynamic pose of the model will better off if I have uh, more details on the back of the hand and if I need to compromise a little bit I'll try to make it uh, in the inner part of the hand like the palms or here in the size, uh, side of the, the finger sorry um, and you always need to go one way and the other and see which one gives you the best result so here the uh, little finger doesn't look too bad but the thumb is really red so I'm gonna tilt that to the opposite direction a little bit further just to see if I can hide that a little bit more and that that that's really no um, easy way of doing that you need to keep going until you find yourself happy um, depending on where you stop with the print uh, you're gonna see there is it there isn't really a clean connection to the build plate so what a trick I usually do is setting up a uh, support blocker like this and scaling um, up um, to make sure it kind of acts like a, a, a build plate for the model itself. That helps with the stability, especially if your uh, part's a bit too tall, uh, but it, it's very important to keep things uh, attached to the base. So all I do is trying to scale that and 
make it as wide as possible uh, and connecting that to the print. So I just need to change that to print as support here in the second icon. And that will be acting like a, a, a structure for my print to uh, move on. And obviously we'll attach that to the build place here, you, you know the lesson number one of 3d printing you can't really print in air uh, so slicing it here quickly it shouldn't take too long uh, and we'll have a look on the preview it's always very important to have a look on the preview so you know exactly what um, parts will be supported what parts will be not supported because uh, not always uh, it will be only on the red part because sometimes the area is not too uh, wide uh, you have some thresholds to make um, support area so if it's if the area is a, a little bit too small you won't ha even have a support in the uh, area that you predicting so when you hit preview you're going to be able to see the three supports and you need to scan through the part to see what areas uh, can be problematic during the printing so here for example i'm going to look here in the um, you see that little tip that little um, beak that we have behind the the nails the very sharp uh, angle that we have there that's very uh, tricky to print because it's going to be a very tiny little part uh, in the support itself so uh, an easy way to check will be um, going down and making sure that is going to be supported as uh, intended so you can go and rotate that a little bit more to make sure or if you like, you tilt that out so you get away with that. And now hopefully it will be just the back of the, the finger, not the tip itself. And again, you need to keep adjusting that every single time to make sure you are happy with the outcome. So you do that a couple of times here. My support block has moved out, so I need to make sure it is a support blocker again. Otherwise, it will keep pushing my print over uh, up in the in the build plate. And then once I'm happy, I'll just move that across again. Move that up. Maybe need to go a bit further. There you go. And move that backwards a little bit. And transform that once more into a support. Slicing again. Now checking again for the supports, looks like a little bit more supported here in the back of the nail and you completely got away with that. There is no support anymore here. And the reason why I am um, affording to do that is that if you go to that layer in particular, you will really see that the, the supports itself wouldn't make any difference. So if I try to make it there, you see that's actually touching with the main print there is one layer you see one or two layers there that's gonna print in the air but that's okay it's, it's basically just a little tip we can uh, fix that later on but here in the other finger uh, things are not that easy see there's a bit bigger of a um, part of the, the the finger or of the nail sorry uh, hanging out there that obviously won't print very well. There is too little support in that. You see that little branch on the tree. So what I'm going to do is very similar to what we've done in the base. So we add a support blocker initially that will make things unsupported essentially. But you adjust that to the size that you want, just like you did for the base. Sometimes this um, adjusting size is a bit annoying in Cura. I don't know exactly why. But I'll try to make it um, my own supports, basically. I'll, I'll, I'll make my own block supports here. Um, I'll tilt that over a little bit. Adjust the dimensions. Location here, tilting, stretching, and making sure that little tip will have something to be printed on top of. Uh, that looks okay. Just need to make it taller now. But once more, the cure gives me a bit funny. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I've accidentally turned everything into a support. So there you go. That's what I wanted to do. 
Once more, you hit um, slice and preview to make sure everything is according to what you wanted. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, the area now supported is much wider. So I'm more confident that that little tip will print uh, nicer than um, it was supposed to do before with the three supports only. So I think I'm happy now with this uh, part. I'm gonna send it to the SD card and uh, we'll see the results later on once I print it. Moving on to the forearm of the same model, uh, this part's a little bit more straightforward. As you can see, there are not, uh, you know, a lot of directions that this printer would do, but because this is, uh, th there are like these li two little tips. So the extremities of the model are a bit tricky. Um, you would try to orient that in a way that you have a um, less supports as needed. So this, in this case, you kind of know the trick already. Uh, despite being very hard to balance this part like that, uh, if you use my trick for the um, support block, you should have no problems uh, with that. So here, I would not expect any supports in the intake, uh, sorry, in the inner part or the outer part. So you just need to adjust this little tilting uh, to make sure you will not have support and again the red area here is the joint so we don't really care about the joint because it's always going to be hidden uh, you need again once more my little trick on support blocker slash print as support thing otherwise you will not be able to balance this print um, as it is because there is only a tiny little tip there supporting the whole um, weight of the structure so this will make things a lot more stable a lot more balanced and you should have no fails so once more try to make it as wide as possible making it connect to the print there you go like that so that should give me a nice structure to print on top a bit wider a bit taller and print as support As usual, just slice and preview. And as you can see, very straightforward. The low, the, the big block there supporting the print where it's unstable. There. See, even with a little area to print that will be supported all across and hopefully we'll have no fail. And that is pretty straightforward. Save to the SD drive and send it to the print. The last part I want to show is the, the arm itself. Uh, a lot of people would print this uh, sideways just like it is, but as you can see by the red markings, this is going to leave a lot of scarring, a lot of marks because of the support. So um, I usually just avoid doing that. I always try to print the arms upright as much as I can. Obviously, uh, Wicked is really good. They split their parts in many uh, different sections. Uh, and here it makes it a little bit trickier to balance uh, but once you've learned now my uh, tricks with the support blocker I should be pretty straightforward to print it upright like this so once more just try um, flipping and tilting around trying to minimize the red areas I will try to uh, leave it only there in the corner of the forearm where there are some armors and if anything here at the the, the base of the shoulder uh, where also there is an armor in this figure so it shouldn't be too worried if I have any marks or scarring on that one. So just like we've done before you play around with the figure try to minimize the red areas uh, and add the support blocker adjust it keep tilting one way the other way I'm just speeding up the video a little bit to save us some time here but the process is exactly the same as we've done before put the support blocker make it wide made it make it high um, and then also make sure you flip that into print as supports otherwise that will just not have anything supports in the base of the print um, yeah that's pretty much the same as we've done before once you're happy you obviously hit slice and check for the results so that looks pretty well supported you see only here in the in the corner of the forearm and obviously there in the peg so it doesn't matter too much we're not going to see that um, one thing you need to be careful in this one so if you scroll down all the way down to the first few layers you see my support block is a little bit too um, 
scarves in terms of lines so there is not much support in the first little islands that are forming up there now see this little triangle there is almost forming up in mid-air or just in that thin uh, line so one way to make this uh, a little bit um, easier to print so is making the supports a little bit denser so you need to increase the density of your support so go back to your settings to your support settings you see all these lines here are a bit too uh, far away from each other and from 5% I'm gonna bump that up I don't know maybe 20 just to make sure I have a very nice uh, grid there and slice that one again And you instantly see the density has increased so now i have a lot of lines a lot of material to support um the first little islands that are forming and then once you have a full body this is not going anywhere it should be very straightforward to print as before so you just hit save and send it to the printer as usual now let's check on the results so for the first part the hand can see it's very well supported we didn't have any problems and whilst I was removing it from the bed it automatically pulled most of the supports out of the print itself uh, looking at the back here where we were concerned you see the little uh, sharp part of the the nail there no problems everything printed okay a little bit of stringing but it should be very easy to sort with a lighter just to get out uh, get away with these um, the wisps so trying to remove the rest of the supports here very careful not to break the fingers and as you can see they basically just pull out very easily there you go fully clean uh, here the pinky uh, I had a problem with a nail as you can see it didn't print very nicely so I might need to redo this with uh, using one of the clay or something so but overall not too bad here even in the thumb doesn't look too bad at all I think just a little bit of sanding will be enough to make it clean and smooth that's it so that's the hand and as you can see very clean excellent scope from wicked 3d second part here also no problems it peeled away completely from the supports as you can see and the only part with a little bit of scarring here is the the joint all the rest very smooth very clean don't think we will have any problems to post process this and turn into a really nice figure last but not least here uh, the the main arm so I'll break the supports to remove it a little bit easier and as you can see they basically crumble apart it's not difficult to remove especially from the main part so just be careful not to break anything that you worried about uh, the block that we put together here at the bottom seems a bit too snug and as you can see it's a little bit more tricky to remove with one hand so just take your time try removing it without any rush maybe, maybe using a, um, this sneak bit uh, pliers that comes with every printer uh, you should have no problem to remove that as well just a quick look here in the bottom of the print not perfect you see a little bit of a, a bridging there but again it, once you put it together with the armor and stuff like that you won't be able to see it even here in the corner of the forearm I think it's smoother than I thought it would be so again another nice print and now a uh, final look on the assembled piece as i said before the key thing is trying to visualize where the seams will be and try to hide everything uh, where you won't be able to see as you put the the pieces together so you look here let's see if i can zoom in a little bit better the hand itself get covered by a little bit of the the armor so all the seams will be hidden same thing for the forearm so yeah, you won't be able to notice all the support marks. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time.